This is Twit. An Alien X quadcopter is a good, strong platform on which you can build up your multi rotor knowledge. Since the last time we built a 450 class quadcopter, the prices of the components have come down a bit and there are now more options for parts. But we're going to show you the basic way to put all the pieces together in our 2018 Alien X build. The first step in integration is to mount the motors on the Alien X's arms. Your frame kit should have included four arms in two different colors. Decide which arms will be forward and which ones will be aft. Put a little time into this decision because you'll need to be able to easily see which way is forward and which is aft once the Alien X is airborne. Now, mark your arms from 1 to 4, with 1 being the forward left arm, 2 being the forward right, 3 aft right, and 4 aft left. This is especially important if you're using motors that are threaded for clockwise and counterclockwise operation, as swapping arms would mean having a motor that will torque off its propeller. This is also just good practice if you ever need to disassemble and reassemble your Alien X. For this build, I've chosen a set of Emacs 2213 motors that are rotation threaded. The two red cap motors are threaded to turn counterclockwise, while the two black cap motors turn clockwise. If you have a similar set of rotation threaded motors but are unsure of which way they are designed to operate, just remember that holding the prop nut while turning the motor in the direction it is supposed to turn will tighten the nut. If it loosens the nut, you've got the wrong one. Take arm number one and one of the motors that turns clockwise, again in our build it's one of the black capped motors, then mount the motor to the arm using four M3 8mm machine screws. The length is important, because 6mm screws won't penetrate far enough into the motor housing to truly lock it to the arm, and 10mm screws will penetrate too far, possibly touching the windings and damaging or destroying the motor. Apply a very thin dab of Loctite glue on each screw to prevent them from vibrating loose. Repeat the process for all four arms. Arm number three gets the other black cap clockwise turning motor, while arms two and four get the two red cap counterclockwise turning motors. With the motors mounted, let's move focus to the electronic speed controllers. If you're using the same Emacs 2213 motors we're using, then you already have pre-soldered male 3.5mm bullet connectors on the motor leads. Our original Alien X build used Ready to Fly Quad Red Series 30 Amp ESCs, but there are now many decent ESCs on the market. Just try to get something with updated microcode. No matter what ESC you choose, there's a good chance that you'll need female 3.5mm bullets on the motor leads and male 3.5mm bullets on the power leads. I actually prefer to not have pre-soldered connectors on the ESCs because it allows us to cut the motor leads down to keep excess wire to a minimum. Thread your motor leads through the lattice of the arms with their connectors ending up on the upper surface. Then place the ESC towards the rear of each arm and eyeball how much wire you can remove. Account for the length of the bullet connectors and be generous with slack. You can tie down a little excess wire, but if it's too short, you'll have to solder new wires. Measure twice and cut once, then repeat the process for all four ESCs. It's time to solder the connectors and you're going to need some helping hands for this. Strip about 4 millimeters of insulation from the ends of the ESC motor leads, gin your ends, then solder 3.5 millimeter female bullet connectors to each lead. The easiest way to attach the bullet connectors is by heating the bullets, again held by the helping hands, until you can flow solder inside the mounting cup. Fill the cup halfway with solder, then insert your pre tin lead. Allow the solder on the leads to reflow, then remove heat and hold the wire in position until the solder cools. With the motor leads done, you can now solder male 3.5mm bullet connectors onto the power leads of the ESCs using the same process that we use for the female connectors on the ESC motor leads. Double check your work. Look for empty mounting cups or obvious gaps between wires and solder. The heat shrink will hide bad joints, so it's best to take a second and third look now before you insulate. If you insulate bad solder joints, you'll have to cut off all the insulation on the motors and the ESC combo at best. At worst, it will fail catastrophically while you're in the air. Once you're satisfied with your soldering work, use lengths of 3 16th inch heat shrink tubing to insulate the connectors. For the female connector, you want to cover everything from the end of the connector to about a quarter inch past. For the male connector, insulate everything from the rotating part of the bullet to about quarter inch past. 
connect the motor leads to the leads on the ESCs, and zip tie them to the far end of the arm away from the motors. The ESC should be securely mounted to the arm, and I like using a second, smaller zip tie to secure the motor leads. But don't yet overly tighten the motor leads, and don't zip tie the wires from the motors yet. You may need to swap several of the connectors when we check motor rotation in the next episode. So set the arms aside, and let's make a power harness. Our power harness starts with a 45mm power distribution board. If you've chosen ESCs that don't provide 5 volt power back to the flight controller, you'll probably want a power distribution board that will. But basically, any power source you connect to the positive and negative leads on the inside of any board will be distributed to any of the devices that are connected to the positive and negative leads on the outside of the board. Cut 8 2 inch lengths of 14 gauge silicone wire, 4 black and 4 red. These will become the leads that go from the distribution board to the power leads on the ESCs. Also cut a pair of 5 inch lengths. These will become the wires that connect the power distribution board to the battery. Strip 4 millimeters of insulation off each end of the 2 inch wires and tin each end. Now solder a female 3.5 millimeter bullet connector to one end of each wire of the 2 inch wires. Insulate each connector with heat shrink tubing as before. The 5 inch pair of wires will be connected to a female XT60 connector, a popular connector found on many LiPo battery packs. Soldering XT60 connectors can be a little tricky because too much heat will melt the plastic housing surrounding the XT60, warping the alignment of the conductors, or destroying the connector altogether. I found that the easiest way to solder the XT60 is to first plug the connector into its opposite to spread the heat and maintain alignment of the conductors, even as the plastic softens. Then you need to be quick with your soldering. Insert your pre-stripped and tin lead into the correct cup. Note that the negative end will always be on the side of the connector with cut corners. Then apply heat to the wire, not the connector. When the solder on the pre-tin wire starts to flow, quickly apply solder to the wire and fill the cup. Then let it cool. Never spend more than 8 seconds applying heat, and make sure to let the XT60 cool before soldering the other wire. Once your wires are attached, use 3 16 inch heat shrink tubing to insulate the conductors. Now, let's assemble the power distribution board. Making sure to match the positive solder points on the red wires and the negative points on the black wires, solder each 2 inch lead to the board. Making sure to use the front 2 and rear 2 contact sets for the ESC leads. Take the 5 inch leads and solder them into the contact points on the inside of the board. You can use either side on most boards but you'll want all your wires mounted on the same side. It doesn't have to be pretty, but try to avoid an excess of solder, which risks a bridge connection. That's a really bad thing when you're passing 50 to 100 amps through the board. With our leads in place and the boards checked for solder bridges, it's time to mount the power distribution board on the lower half of the frame. If you're wondering which plate is the lower half, the lower half is wider and longer than the top half. Using nylon spacers and the pre-drilled mounting holes, secure the board so that the solder points point up and the power leads point to the front and rear of the frame. If you have the spacers, you can also screw spacers on top of the board with a total height of 1.5 inches. This will allow you to secure the board to the top frame once the arms are installed, making your frame more rigid. Remembering the numbering of your arms, attach them to the bottom plate with two screws each. Pass the power leads to the arms and connect them to the leads from the power harness. Make sure not to flex the frame or put any undue pressure on it since it's relatively fragile until the top half of the frame is attached. Attach the top half of the frame to the arms using the included screws. Once those are fastened, use the four aluminum posts to complete the tail working towards the rear of the frame. Zip tie your receiver to the tail and use the excess zip tie length to secure the receiver's antenna. Using more nylon spacers, mount the flight controller on the top deck directly above the power distribution board. This is the center of gravity for your craft. I'm mounting the flight controller on the top deck because I'm using a KK 2.1.5 board and I want easy access to the screen and controls while tuning, but you can also mount your flight controller within the frame just above the power distribution board. Using the four rubber dampeners, install the clean plate on the nose of the Alien X. The clean plate will allow you to mount GoPro-style cameras on a surface that is somewhat isolated from the rest of the frame, reducing vibration while placing the camera in the nose of the craft. Now it's time to wire your flight controller. 
This is a basic platform Alien X, so we're using a KK flight controller. It doesn't do GPS or return to home or even altitude hold. Basically, all it will do is keep your craft level, but it's easy to wire and inexpensive, so it's perfect for this build. If you're using something else, you'll need to modify these instructions to fit your controller. The ESCs will be connected to the row of pins to the right of the KK, with the topmost set of pins for ESC1, the second set for ESC2, and so forth. The numbering of the ESC is the same as the arm number I had you mark earlier. When connecting the ESC to the controller, make sure the ground wire, usually black, is to the outside of the board, the positive wire is to the middle, and the signal cable, usually yellow or white, is to the inside. Most non-optotype ESCs include a battery eliminator circuit, or BEC, that provides 5 or 6 volt power to the flight controller and the receiver from the main battery, but they can fry electronics if incorrectly connected. Check and double check your connections before you apply power. Also, while the KK and many other flight controllers like it will only accept power from the first ESC, some flight controllers will fry if you connect them to more than one BEC equipped ESC. If you're using such a flight controller, snip the red center wire on the ESCs other than the first. Your receiver should have a schematic for which pins are signal and which are power. Plug one of your servo leads into the receiver pins for channel 1, making sure to use the white or yellow wire for signal. Plug the other side of the lead into the topmost set of pins on the left side of the controller with the white or yellow signal cable towards the inside of the KK. Take a second lead and connect it to just the signal pins of channels 2 through 4 on the receiver. Connect the other end of that lead to just the signal pins, the ones closest to the screen for channels 2 to 4 on the flight controller. Then use the last lead to connect channel 5 from the receiver to the controller. RKK came with a small alarm that gives us audible information about arming status, voltage, and, if we crash in the weeds, an audible location signal. On the top left side of the KK are two pins labeled buzzer. Connect the red lead to the positive pin and the black lead to the negative. Now for the moment of truth. We're going to connect power to the Alien X for the first time. Recheck your connections to make sure you haven't cross-connected anything, and make sure your props are not yet on the motors. Then, standing ready to remove power at the first hint of trouble or blue smoke, connect your XT60 power connector to a lithium poly battery. If all is well, then you should hear the flight controller beep and see the LED screen light up. If so, congrats! There's still a lot to do. We need to calibrate the receiver, check the rotation of our motors and tune the craft, but we'll save that for the next episode of our 2018 Alien X build.